Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa wa rasulillah. So, alhamdulillah, we have completed uh, the hadith up until the hadith of Usama, the hadith of Usama 160. This numbering, I think, is a bit different from the numbering I have. But anyhow, the hadith of Usama is completed. The following hadith, Babu Qawli Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man hamal alayna silah falisa minna. He says, this chapter talks about uh, the Prophet saying, Man hamal alayna silah falisa minna. Whoever carries a weapon against us, he is not one of us. Okay? It's all, it relates to the previous hadith of Usama, when he uh, yani accidentally or uh, inadvertently killed that person during combat because after he uttered the testimony of faith. So here, Man hamal alayna silah falisa minna. Whoever carries a weapon fights against us with weapons, he is not one of us. Because <clears throat> the weapon can kill. And, uh, and then it's not like a regular fight, uh, people just fighting with their arms. Uh, that can happen. But uh, to actually carry a weapon like a knife or a gun and go against people, uh, then he is not one of, uh, he's not one of us. And Ibn Umar, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Man hamal minna. Another narration, Man salla alayna sayfa falaysa minna. Whoever yields a sword against us, he is not one of us. Uh, so these are three hadiths with the same narration or the same meaning. And there's another one that says, من حمل علينا السلاح فليس منا ومن غشنا فليس منا He added, and whoever deceives us, he is not one of us. And then another hadith says, <coughs> another hadith Abu Hurairah says that the Messenger وسلم, was passing by the market and he saw somebody selling some food, maybe some grain or something, some grain, and it was a big heap of grain. And then <coughs> Prophet suspected that this grain was wet, at least on the bottom. Uh, and if, if the grain is wet, it will rotten will rot quickly and will not be edible. So he actually stuck his hand into the bottom and he felt it came out wet. He said to the seller, what is this, O owner of these grains or this food? He says, He says, I, I, I had it like this, but it rained and it got wet. He <clears throat> He says, why don't you bring the wet grain on the top rather than leave the dry grain on the top and deceive people? He says, you should put it on the top, the wet grain, so that people see it and know what they're buying. Whoever deceives, the first one says, man ghashana. Whoever deceives us, meaning Muslims, but here he made it more general. Man ghasha, whoever deceives in general is not one of us. And that's, that applies to deceiving. That applies to deceiving Muslims or non-Muslims. Applies to deceiving Muslims or non-Muslims. Um, I'm just reading the hadith that say Laysa minna, and then explain what Laysa minna means. Well, not one of us, what it means. Uh, in another hadith, it says Laysa minna man darab al khudud. Um, you know, to uh, people sometimes when there's something really bad happened to, the, to them, they go like this and they slap their faces. Uh, it's, uh, in some cultures, uh, they do that. Uh, this is called Latm al Khud, Darb al Khudud, or Latm al Khudud. Laysa minna man darab al Khudud. Whoever slaps their face uh, due to some, some awful news that came to them or something bad that happened to them, Laysa minna, Laysa minna man darab al Khudud, or Shak al Jayub, Shak al Jayub, this is called Jayb. This opening, Wal Yadribna bi Khumur hinna, ala Jayub hin. This Jayb means the opening of the shirt from the collar here, it's called Jayb. When the, when the ayah says, وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ The khimar, the ghita, uh, in the ayah of hijab, talking about the khimar, whatever covers the head, cannot cover the head and then leave, leave a gap like this where this part of the neck or the upper chest is apparent. No, it has to be covered. It has to be covered. Whether we say it covers like this or we say it covers like this. So it could be understood both ways. And that's why uh, both forms of hijab are acceptable. Either you cover, but you have to cover this. You have to cover, she has to cover the upper chest as well. The neck and the upper chest called nahr. Uh, nahr is this part here and what, uh, and the clothing is called jayb. <coughs> says, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَطَمَ الْخُدُودِ أَوْ شَقَّ الْجِيُوبِ أَوْ دَعَى بِدَعْوَ الْجَاهِلِيَ Or kept on yelling and wailing like the people of the pre-Islamic period. When somebody dies, they used to wail and, uh, so much and raise their voices. That's all forbidden. <coughs> and another hadith in the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bari'a min al-saliqa wal-haliqa wal-shaqa As-saliqa means the one who raises her voice 
uh, in calamity, yelling and wailing. Walhaliqa, some women in, uh, in Arabia, when something bad or her husband dies or her son dies, they used to shave their head bald, called al haliqa, uh, to show that they are grieving. Washaqa, uh, again, shaqa means the one who tears her clothing uh, for the same reason. One time Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, Abu Musa, he passed out and his wife started yelling, you know, crying loudly and yelling. Uh, when, he, when he woke up, of course he was informed what she did. He says to her, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمِي وَكَانَ يُحَدِّثُهَا أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ أَنَا بَرِيءٌ مِّنْ مَنْ حَلَقَ وَسَلَقَ وَخَرَقَ He says, did you not know that the Messenger of Allah says that أَنَا بَرِيءٌ means I have nothing to do with the one who shaves the head or <coughs> Salaqa means yelling, uh, raise her voice with wailing. Uh, or uh, cut, uh, tear her clothes. Anyhow, laysa minna aw ana bari' means that I have nothing to do with them. Or laysa minna is not one of us, means that he's not according to our teaching. He's not following my teaching. Doesn't mean laysa minna he's a kafir. Does not mean he's a total disbeliever. If he does that uh, out of conviction, that uh, istihlal, that it is halal and he, he dis totally disregards the teachings and says no I have nothing to do with these teachings I think it's proper and it's, I will do it there's nothing wrong with it although we tell him that uh, yani we have many hadiths that say this is haram he says no this is halal that's, uh, that's called istihlal that's changing the deen of Allah that's, that becomes kufr then laysa minna becomes kufr that is not a Muslim anymore but the vast majority don't say that the vast majority do it and Sometimes they just cannot control themselves or they haven't trained themselves to restrain themselves. So then becomes a sin. فَلَيْسَ مِنَّ Here means he are, they are not following my teachings. They are not following my way and tradition and sunnah. You follow? That's why. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> but it's a strong form of um, warning because he's telling you, you're not, just like when you tell your son, if you do this, you're not my son. But it doesn't mean that he's not your son in reality. But you're not like me, you're not following my teachings, you haven't listened to what I've said. You saw? You feel you follow that? So Laysa Minna. Um <coughs> I think this explains those ahadith that say Laysa Minna. Um uh, or Anabari. Yes, Anabari means I uh, I distance myself from them, they're not according to my way. Also, it means that uh, whatever punishment may befall them from Allah. Here or in the hereafter, I, ha I have nothing to do. I have discharged my responsibility and warned you. So, which means that, uh, just like when you advise somebody, give him advice, don't do this, don't do this, otherwise this will happen to you. And then he doesn't listen and he still does it and something bad happens to him. You say, you know, I have nothing to do with you. I, I've, I've warned you, I've warned you. Uh, so this is the other meaning of anabari. I'm free, I'm free of responsibility towards you. I've discharged my responsibility towards you and you're the one who did not want to, did not want to listen. We'll stop here, inshallah.